All right, folks. So in this video, we are going to use this tiny SA to test the output of this Pixie CW transceiver. And we say CW transceiver, we talk about a two-way radio that we assembled from a parts kit. Let's go ahead and get started. So the tiny SA comes in this dress box. I think you call it a dress box, but I'm not 100% sure. But in any event, it's a nice box. So when you open it up, you see your tiny SA, and then there you can actually see my camera reflected in the uh, display. Now, it comes wrapped in this piece of plastic, but uh, I already took it out because I couldn't help myself and started playing around with it. With more than a decade in the field of PCB prototype and fabrication, PCB Way is committed to meeting the needs of customers in terms of quality, delivery, and cost effectiveness. PCB Way fulfills thousands of orders daily from around the world. PCB Way has been established as the leading supplier of PCB services based off consistent quality and excellent services. At PCB Way, there's no minimum requirement, fair pricing, free DFM services, on-time shipping, an easy return and refund policy, and 24 hours customer service to help you with any needs that arise. Prototype your next project with PCB Way. It comes with the product itself, and uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I do want to highlight it does have a USB-C port here. You use this to charge the internal battery and to connect it to your computer to use some software, which we'll do later in this video. Here's the USB-C cable that you use to charge or connect it to the computer. And it comes with this um, stylus. It's like a guitar pick that uh, you can use to work the menu on the screen. I don't use that. I use something like this. Um, to me, this is just a little bit easier and more natural. And it also has this lanyard attachment that you can attach uh, to your tiny SA and then put your hand in here if you're operating out in the field and you don't want to risk dropping your device. You have this through connector or standard here, and uh, these are pretty handy uh, for connecting stuff together, like these coaxial cables in the event that you need to. But uh, it comes with these two TESA leads or two coax cables, SMA male. Um, fantastic. You connect them up to these. SMA female uh, ports that you have on the actual device. Uh, oh, look at this. Here is a black stylus. Maybe we'll, we'll use that one. Um, also, it does come with this antenna, and then you can use your tiny SA. You just connect this antenna to the SMA port, and then you can use this to detect RF that is actually in the air. You don't have to just use a coax feed going into the tiny SA. Anyhow, that's that part of the video. All right, uh, I took the tiny SA apart. It was very simple to do. Here's the front bezel, I think is what they call this. Um, and you can see this is the upgraded version where it talks about input protection and things along those lines. This is an older uh, tiny SA, and then you can see my heating vent on the ceiling there. But uh, here's some information on the back, and you can see it's just four screws that, are, that you take out. Here are those screws. It was a rather simple operation. This will still uh, power up. And one of the reasons I took this apart is, is I like to take things apart and take a look inside. But um, here you can see the board is branded Tiny SA. And then uh, I can roll in some better pictures if you can't see it. But here you have Tiny SA. And then you have the version number uh, of the product, which matches the back of the case, which is nice. Um, just taking a look at it, you can see here's your jog dial, power, power on button. Here's your charging port or USB-C port. Uh, here you can see your 3.7 volt 650 milliamp hour battery um, which is which is nice uh, you can also see the board that uh, looks like it's really well constructed and the, and the um, everything is readable like it's a quality board uh, which is nice and then you can see the appropriate shielding the, the reason i like to take these open is a lot of these smaller devices like this can be uh, can be counterfeit or faked and so when you when you open them up and you look you want to make sure that you see branding on the board you want to see good clean uh, silk screen and lettering on here good quality parts good craftsmanship shielding is another thing um, so I feel really good about uh, this particular tiny SA and so let's uh, let's do our testing with it so here's the R-Sync storefront on Amazon and when you go here you'll see that they have various electronic equipment there's a menu of the different types of products. And for today, we're going to take a look at Spectrum Analyzer. And then here you can see a tiny Spectrum Analyzer resistive touchscreen. 
Uh, and it goes over some of the features that uh, you would expect to see on a tiny SA. And here's a tiny SA that they sell that comes with uh, different stuff, right? It comes with a stylus, antenna, some connections, a through port, and then you can go through and look at the different different features. For example, here it talks about firmware and model number and how to see that. Um, down here is a kit that comes with an attenuator, a 30 dB attenuator, and it looks like there's some extra cables there as well. Anyhow, I just wanted to show uh, where you can pick this up, and I'll include a link below. All right, so in order to successfully test this, there's a couple of different things that we're going to need. One of them is, is that when you take a look at this, this tells you that plus 10 dB of max RF should go into this uh, tiny SA or you result, uh, you, could, you could have damage resulting. And um, we don't want to damage our tiny SA because we like tiny SAs and they're fun to use. Uh, so we're concerned about the power output of this Pixie exceeding the limitation. So what we use is an attenuator. And this is a 40 dB attenuator, which means it weakens or reduces the signal coming out of the Pixie by roughly 40 dB. And that should put us in a safety zone here for our tiny SA. The other thing is, is that we are going to need a CW or Morse code key. Um, and we happen to have one right here that we are going to connect to our Pixie. And then that way we'll be able to use this key to generate a signal here and then detect a signal with the tiny SA. We're going to need an adapter for our antenna attachment that takes us from a BNC type connection down to an SMA. Also, these are the cables that came with the tiny SA. Um, so it's pretty handy that it comes with these. And this will allow us to put this in line. We're going to feed the signal into the low input port on our tiny SA. And we're even going to take a look uh, at the output of the tiny SA on some PC based software that we have. Finally, we are going to use a 12 volt battery. This one happens to be from BioNO to power our Pixie so that way we can get Pixie into the device. So let me go ahead and set all this up and then uh, we can see what it looks like. It's going to get a little crowded here on the desk. Okay, now one of the things that we want to do before we fire everything up, and we do have our 40 dB of attenuation here, is I want to go in here and I will get a close-up of these actions so you can see them. Uh, and I want to do level and then I want to go to attenuate. Oops. I want to go to attenuate and I do want to manually attenuate at 20 dB. And then you should be able to see that here. Again, I will include better pictures of that so you can see it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to connect the battery. And then we start to see some activity. So what I've done is I've set the start frequency to 5 megahertz and the stop frequency at 30 megahertz just so we can see what's going on here. Now, when I do go ahead and I key this up, one of the things that you'll notice is, is that we do have harmonics along multiples of our fundamental frequency. This is our fundamental frequency that's measuring at around a, uh, minus 10 to a, minus 11 dB right now. Now, the Pixie emits a signal at all times, which is right now at around minus 39.2 dB. So let's take a look at, a at this on the computer so we can get a little bit better uh, visualization as to what's going on. Okay, here we are connected to the computer, and then we are running the Tiny SA app. I'm not going to go through the steps of installing the software, but uh, you can find the instructions on the tinysa.org website. So what we see here is a fundamental frequency at uh, 7.050 uh, megahertz. 
And uh, you can see that right here. And what it is showing us is that we are around negative 40 dB down. Uh, keep in mind, we're using a negative 40 dB attenuator pad. Um, and then we've configured our tiny SA to for an additional 20 dB. So our signal really would be at a plus 20. Now, this is a, a, a signal that is uh, always coming out of the Pixie kit. Um, and then you can see that there are some harmonics of this fundamental. This would be the first harmonic, second, and third. Uh, and that is a typical thing to see. But it's nice to be able to see it visually with a tool like a tiny SA. And it's even easier to see if you have old eyes like me and take advantage of the software program. Now, one of the things that I want to do is I want to key up on the, uh, on the Pixie. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do that now. And then once I do that, you can see that the fundamental frequency goes up to around negative 12, but then also all of these different uh, harmonics, the harmonic frequencies go up as well, and then you can get different values for them. So here's like negative 31 dBm, this one would be around negative 50, negative 51, and then this one is uh, negative 59 right now. So one of the things that we can do using tools like this to do an analysis is potentially build a filter. And then we can put a filter on the output of our Pixie kit. And by doing that, hopefully we can attenuate some of these signals. Uh, we're going to play around with something called a low pass filter. So let me go ahead and pull that up and show you what we have. Now we'll do more videos on this particular device and filters in general. But uh, what I wanted to show that we're going to use uh, for this video is this Nano VNA test board kit. And it allows us to feed a signal in one side and out the other. Uh, when you take a look at it, we have an inductor and then we have two capacitors here. And this is what we would call a Pi network filter. And it is a low pass filter. And at a certain frequency, what it will do is start to attenuate frequencies that are higher in the RF spectrum. So what we should see when we place this in line is a reduction of the strength of those harmonics that we saw using the software for the tiny SA. So let me go ahead and just unscrew this real quick and then place this in line. And, uh, you know, I one of the things that's really cool for me um, getting into uh, amateur radio, and I have been for a while, is that you can buy things like this tiny SA for 70 bucks and like a nano VNA for 75 bucks. And then you can build a little transceiver like this to play around with, and then you can build filter kits. And it really, really helps you learn a lot about amateur radio, uh, radio and RF in general. Um, and it's a good, clean, wholesome hobby. So anyhow, let me go ahead and get this set up, get off of my soapbox. And what we're going to do now is we are going to go back to the software and we're going to see if putting this filter in line made any difference. Okay, so we're back and we're taking a look at this. And amazingly enough, this is our fundamental frequency and it is right at around the same output level that it was before. But all of our harmonics are gone. And this is with the tiny SA at rest. Remember, we had some, we had some spikes here that we could see. So let me go ahead and key up. And uh, when we key up, we still get some of the harmonics. Let's take a look at this. And this is now at negative 39. Um, before it was negative 31. So we get about 8 dB of suppression there. And then on our second uh, harmonic frequency, we were at negative 31, and now it's at a negative 72. So it tells us the roll off of our, of our filter uh, gets a little bit stronger as we go up. And then we don't even have the uh, third harmonic. So that's pretty cool to see that work. Um, we can change out the components on our filter and uh, we can see if we can adjust that to be stronger, roll off a little bit harder, uh, reduce the, the first harmonic a little bit, but we're not gonna do that in this video. With that, I'm gonna say thank you to RSync for sending me this tiny SA for test and evaluation purposes. Thanks to everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks everybody.